Senator from Kentucky. I rise in opposition to the government listening to your phone calls, reading your emails, or reading your text messages without a warrant. Doesn't mean the government will never do this, but it means they would have to ask a judge. They would have to ask a judge if they have probable cause that you've committed a crime. They would have to name you. They would have to name the information they want. It's called the Fourth Amendment. All Americans deserve the protection of the Fourth Amendment. In fact, I believe it was John Adams who said that James Otis's argument against blanket warrants, against generalized warrants that they called writs of assistance, he said that that argument that James Otis made in the 1760s was the spark that led to the American Revolution. Lincoln is said to have written that any man can stand adversity, but if you want to challenge a man or a woman, give them power. It's really been the history of Western civilization over almost a thousand years, the struggle to contain the power of the monarch, the struggle to maintain and contain the power of the government in every form. From the Magna Carta on, it has been the people trying to take power back from either monarchy or despotic government. We get to the formation of our government, and Jefferson wrote that the Constitution would be the chains, that the government would be bound up in the chains. Patrick Henry wrote that the Constitution is meant to restrain the government, not the people. It is about trying to restrain government from abusing the power to take our rights. You have a fundamental right to be left alone. Justice Brandeis put it this way. He said, the right most cherished among civilized men and women is the right to be left alone. But we know also that the history of those who grab the reins of power The history of those who take up the mantle of power is a history of abuse. President Wilson in World War I arrested 10,000 Americans for their objection to the war. FDR had an enemies list that he actually was very vocal and published in newspapers, 77 people that were his enemies, and he used the IRS to go after them. LBJ illegally spied on Martin Luther King. We just had Martin Luther King Day yesterday. LBJ spied on him illegally in all manners, in all forms. They spied on Vietnam War veterans. Nixon had an enemies list. You name it, president after president has abused this power. President Obama had a fight with the Tea Party groups. It turns out that to register as a Tea Party group was given extra scrutiny and people were denied being allowed to form as a charitable group or a political activist group under President Obama because they disagreed with President Obama. We now have a current uh, administration where there have been accusations of people in the FBI having a personal animus against this president and conspiring and discussing how they could block him. We've had members of the Department of Justice who were married to people doing opposition research on President Trump, paid for by the opposition candidate, by Hillary Clinton. There is without question that power has been abused and will always be abused. It was Lord Acton who said that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. The history of our country is about trying to restrain the power of government. Realize that we have the ability to collect all of the phone calls in Italy in one month. There was a story saying we did it. We collected every phone call from Italy. Who gets trapped in that? If you collect everyone's phone calls in Germany or everyone's phone calls in Jordan, who gets caught in that? Many, many innocent, legitimate Americans get caught up in the other end of phone calls because it's not just the phone calls of terrorists, it's everybody's phone calls. They're all being vacuumed up, and innocent Americans are caught up in that. Senator Wyden has been a leader in saying and asking tough questions on the Intelligence Committee. Are there communications that are purely between two people in America that somehow get caught in this database? And he's been given a variety of answers on this, but we suspect that Americans talking to Americans in this country are caught up in this database. Should the government be allowed to search this database to prosecute you for IRS 
uh, for not paying your taxes, for a minor, a minor marijuana violation? Absolutely not. Why? Because this information is gathered without a warrant. It is gathered without any constitutional protection. And as others have said, we actually are okay with a lower standard for gathering foreign intelligence. We acknowledge the Constitution doesn't apply to everybody in the world. But if Americans get caught up in that, Americans deserve the protection of the Constitution. Now, some on the other side have started saying, well, it's lawfully gathered, so it can be used for any lawful purpose. That is the most ridiculous argument I have ever heard. It's gathered lawfully for foreigners, and we made the standard zero. There is no constitutional protection. We never said we're going to gather foreigners' information, put it in a big pool, mix it up with Americans' information, and then type your name in, John Smith, and then find out who you've been talking to. Realize that they could listen to your conversation, then they could bring you in for an interview with the FBI, and if you say anything in the interview that contradicts what they eavesdropped on you in your conversation, you've now committed a felony. Do we really want all of our phone calls recorded and then have the ability of the government to bring you in and ask you questions about your phone calls? And if you're not perfectly accurate in recording your phone calls, you could go to prison? All we're asking for is that for Americans, the Constitution should be in order. We should not get rid of the Constitution. We shouldn't throw it out. The Constitution should protect us all. We take an oath of office to defend the Constitution. Our soldiers take the same oath of office. Wouldn't it be sad if our soldiers came home from fighting and defending the Constitution to learn that we gave up on it while they were gone? The sad state of affairs here is that the majority doesn't want any debate. They want to ram this through with no amendments. Senator Wyden and I have worked for months on amendments and on a, a, an alternative bill which actually reauthorizes the program. Senator Leahy and Lee have another bill that's similar that replaces the program. None of us are for ending the program. We're all for saying if you want to look at an American's information, you got to get a warrant. People say it'll slow us down. All of our bills have an emergency exception. If they declare an emergency, they can look at the information and get the warrant the next day. We hope that that would be extraordinary and not the, not the norm. So the thing is, is we want the program to work, but we don't want Americans caught up in it. I hope that senators will think this through. This will not kill the program. They're going to scare you to death and say, tomorrow we're all going to you know, die and the world's going to be taken over by terrorists if we don't have this. If we win this vote tonight, they'll be negotiating within an hour and we'll come to a compromise that allows the Constitution to protect Americans. That was our oath of office. That is what we should do. And I urge a vote against the bill in a current fashion. Mr. President.